Hey, you guys know the difference between jam and jelly? You can't jelly your cock up a dead girl's ass. <laughs> Dude, not cool. Oh, and by the way, cow. Ah! <laughs> mm-hmm, that's what you get. No? Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, coming out in 2009, written, produced, and directed by Rob Zombie himself. This movie takes place immediately after the first movie. Well, at least we kind of think. You know, the first 20 minutes of this film, pretty fucking great. I mean, really fucking great. Starting off, Michael Myers is presumably dead. Yeah, we know Michael Myers isn't dead. That fucker never dies. Going to the hospital, acting just like the 1981's Halloween 2. Which, yeah, I know I said in my last review that I didn't like Rob Zombie's first Halloween because the second half felt like a carbon copy. But I was on board for this first 20 minutes. The violence was there, the brutality, the anger. It was so amazing. I can't even say anything about the first 20 minutes that's bad because that, that first 20 minutes, wow. That was horror gold, guys, and I was ready for an amazing horror film. I thought Rob Zombie was going to really bring it this time around, and guess what? I was disappointed. Yeah, I was disappointed. Damn dream sequence. What the hell is that? Going to give me a fucking dream sequence? 20 minutes into the film. It was a dream, man. And I know it wasn't all a dream sequence. I know she actually went to the hospital, and it's a year later, but whatever. Fuck all that. Jeez, man. My, literally, we had Tyler May and Michael Myers just ripping apart that guard post. Oh, that was so cool. And the rain falling down on his mask. He looking all gnarly and everything. And yeah, she wakes up from a dream. I was pissed. But hey, what can you do? So I stuck through the movie. And, you know, there were some things that I really actually did enjoy. Like I said just a few seconds ago, the brutality in this film is unmatched. You thought the Firefly trilogy was brutal? Forget it. This movie is wild. I mean, the gore. The, the, the sheer amount of pain that the victims get in this movie, oh my god. <laughs> Jesus, Richard Brake getting his neck cut off with that glass shard. And yeah, it was pretty sweet to see all the kills, I can't even lie. I thought Tyler Mayne, again, killed it as Michael. He was fucking amazing, doing his job being that big hulking son of a bitch that he is, just taking lives at every single second that he got. He's big, he's bad. I like Brad Dorf as Sheriff Brackett. I thought he was amazing in this film. I didn't understand why we saw more Sheriff Brackett than we did Dr. Loomis, but hey, Brad Dorf fucking killed it. I mean, I really felt for him when his daughter Annie got murdered towards the end of the film. Jesus, that shit brought a tear to my eye. Not really, because this movie really couldn't. But I thought he was amazing, really brought an amazing performance. And overall, um, that's kind of it that I liked. I liked the Halloween feel, you know, the actual Halloween mood, not the movie, but the literal holiday mood that we had in it. thought that was pretty cool. I think a movie called Halloween, I think every Halloween film has to have that feeling of um, the holiday because it's literally called Halloween. And I thought this movie brought that. Halloween! But... Other than that, uh, Weird Al was funny when he was in it, I guess. Of profiteering off the misery of others. I mean, how do you even respond to that criticism? Well, you know, I, I think that's completely unfounded. I, uh, I always get permission when I do the parody. I was mixed on Dr. Loomis. Malcolm McDowell again coming back for the second film. He was okay. He's just pretty much a jerk off this whole entire movie. I'm kind of just an asshole, but that's the Dr. Loomis that he was in the first movie, and he's just doubling down on it in this one. We don't see a lot of him again. He's only in some scenes, not getting much screen time like I already stated, but he was okay. I like Malcolm McDowell as an actor. Clockwork Orange is a fucking insane movie. Always gonna like that film. I know it's messed up as well, but shit, it really fucking packs a punch. All right, all the good out of the way. Let me talk about the bad shit, the shit that I hated. Because, yeah, guys, I didn't like this one. I'm sorry. I wanted to. I really did. I was mixed on the first one. I thought this one could bring, you know, a better punch. I heard mixed reviews on it. It's just not good. It's not good. It's not good. So let me just start off with the script writing. Rob Zombie, man. You know, watching the Firefly trilogy, the script writing fit those movies to a certain extent. But this film, like I said in the first review again, just, there's no character growth for any of these people. And, like, 
even Lori, I mean, I know her whole thing in this one. She's going through the trauma of what she experienced in the first film. And, you know, she's been through a lot. <laughs> you could say that Rob Zombie's Halloween is Michael Myers movie and Halloween 2 is Laurie Strode's movie but shit I just wish it was Jamie Lee Curtis again guys no god no god please no and you know most of the characters that Rob brings for us in this film we got Daniel Harris playing Annie I just didn't care about her. I mean, yeah, it was really sad when she died, but that was Brad Dorff bringing the action, man. He was making me feel bad. I didn't really care about her character. Lori's friends, didn't really care about them. And oh my God, Sherry Moon Zombie. I, I don't know what to say about Sherry Moon Zombie anymore. She, is she a good actress? I don't know, because in this movie she's not. But like, She's only in these like vision sequences, you know, she shows up in that white dress with the white horse bullshit and her lines are terrible. I mean, just so bad. And little Michael Myers, different kid from the first movie. Okay, I guess the other one probably got older two years later. They had to get a different one. All right, that's fine. But shit, both, they were just, cut them out of the movie. That shit was, I never want to see that shit again. Like I said, I did like Tyler Maine's Michael Myers. I think he's a great Michael Myers. You know, my, playing Michael Myers has got to be pretty difficult because you're acting with your eyes, you're acting with your body, you're not talking. Except for this movie. Well, he doesn't really talk, but he grunts and moans. I don't like seeing my Michael Myers making any sounds. I want that motherfucker to be silent. It makes it more scary. And yeah, I don't like seeing him without the mask either. It doesn't make him feel like Michael Myers. I understand he puts the mask on to do some bullshit. You know, it's like a special event for him in this one where he puts the mask on. I don't want to see Michael without the mask. Also, Halloween implies that Michael Myers eats dogs. We don't actually see him eating dogs. That's kind of why it makes it scary. But Rob, you don't gotta show us Michael Myers eating a literal dog, okay? And like I said about those those vision sequen sequences, uh, Rob's trying to give character to Michael. He's trying to make him more fleshed out, more insightful, uh, whatever. I didn't like them. I don't like Michael having that much character. His character is him. He's Michael Myers. He is the boogeyman, the embodiment of evil. He is just destruction. A literal demon. Not literally, of course, but... Shit, he is on demon time, a lot of it, a lot of it, and in this movie, that's shown, but we don't need to see all of his story shit. I didn't enjoy it, and I didn't want to see any of it. I was tired every single time I saw Sherry Moon Zombie and that goddamn white dress showing up with that fucking white horse. You know, and the editing in this film, it... Michael literally is a teleporter. I mean, I understand our horror monsters like Michael, Jason, Freddy. These guys can teleport, but more so Freddy can, we can see Freddy teleport more. That makes sense in his dream sequences, but I don't want to see Michael teleporting. There's literally a kill in this movie where we see Michael just show up out of fucking thin air and knife some poor son of a bitch to the ground. But anyways, you know, just a lot of this movie felt like a lot of bullshit was going on. Taylor, Scout Taylor Compton screaming, freaking out, uh, getting pulled back into that trance state where she thinks she's with Michael. And I just didn't enjoy it, guys. I mean, jeez. Like, if it really wasn't for just the sh pure violence of this film, I would have turned it off. Like, I'm that serious. I would have turned this thing off. But Rob did bring the violence. And... I can't deny, uh, that's what got me, that's really what kept me going with this thing. Most of it, it's really just Lori struggling with her inner demons and Michael having a redemption arc, coming back from some hillbilly ass farm, bringing his way back to Haddonfield, Illinois, and doing damage again. We got Jeff Daniel Phillips again in this thing. You remember him from, remember him as the warden in Three from Hell. And yeah, he's just as cartoonish as ever, but... His kill is pretty gnarly, and the whole strip club sequence is pretty dope. I can't even deny that. So, 
I suggest you take the easy road out and hit the bricks, Dorothy. And yeah, I think I just keep circling back around to the freaking brutal, to the fucking brutality in this thing because that is what's on my mind right now from this movie. The character work, the script writing, the editing, the cinematography, forget it. I just like the violence guys in this one. And the ending, Jesus Christ, that ending. Yeah, so Dr. Loomis totally comes into this little shack. They, uh, the police have surrounded this little shack where Michael's at. Lori's in there being pulled by fucking baby Michael ghost, Sherry Moon ghost, and whatever the fuck. She can't move, and Dr. Loomis comes in trying to help Michael. He brutally butchers him. And, uh, what? And, and again, he doesn't kill Lori. I said it in the last one, guys. He's not going to kill Lori. I knew it. And he didn't. I knew he wasn't going to kill her in this one, even though Sherry Moon the Zombie was egging him on the whole entire film. And why was she bad in this one? Like, why is she just, like, on demon shit in this one? In the first one, she was, like, a mother who was grieving. She was, you know, she felt bad about her son's actions. She didn't seem like a terrible person, but I guess when she died, she just became a little fucking bad out of hell. And yeah, she just wants Lori dead, the family back together. And it doesn't happen. Lori knifes the shit out of Michael. Michael gets sniped the whole nine yards, guys. Lori walks out with the Michael Myers mask. And, well, she ends up in an insane asylum at the end of the movie. And we get that fucking white horse again. Jesus Christ. I want to say that this movie doesn't handle trauma well because it really probably does. Uh, I would could understand that if you would went through the things that Lori does in both of these films, you'd be feeling some sort of way. But, you know, her screaming and her acting, and I'm just really ripping on Scout Taylor Compton here, guys, but she's the focal point of the film. It was just terrible for me. I understand the hate for this one, guys. I've seen the other way i've looked at reviews the other way people saying that this was going to be a classic in 20 some years this movie's not anything special for me at least i think i'd rather have michael myers stab me in the ass fucking 50 million times no way guys three out of ten see you next time you suck!